joining Brandis Daniel are Michelle Terry, Fiona Kai, and Terry Roberts. So I know you guys have done so much work with sustainability, so I'm excited to get to it. Now, let's start with how is AEO currently thinking about sustainability? Can I just take one sec? Yeah. say yes. thank you to HFR. You all are awesome. Thank you. Brand, this is a real one. <laughs> I think you know what I'm talking about when I say this. You know, I met Brandis in 2020. And this has been one of the most wonderful partnerships we could have. You know, at AEO, we talk about inclusion, diversity, equity, and access. And when we think about sustainability, what's more inclusive than our planet? I mean, you talk about, I mean, I do like sci-fi, so I like The Martian, but we're, we're all on, the, on Earth right now. And so if there's one thing that brings us all together, I do think if we're all in one place, and we always should do what we can to make sure it's best for ourselves and also the future. Thank you so much, Jerry. I'm going to get a shirt that says, Brandis is a real one. <laughs> as long as I get cut. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a quote to Terry Roberts. Yeah, um, we can make that for you from production. Oh, my <laughs> um, But I'll let Michelle, if you want to. Yeah, absolutely. Up. So thanks so much for having us. Absolutely. Um, so I oversee for the company um, sustainability and responsible sourcing and you know right now I would say you know I've been working in this space for a number of years and sustainability has never been such a priority so top of mind for everyone um, such a strategic initiative for the company and I, I think it's coming from a number of different places um, first and foremost um, AEO you know, it's American Eagle Aerie these brands are very focused on a, on a young customer. So our customer is 15 to 20 years old in, in, in general. And you know, the, the, this, the demographic, this population is talking about sustainability. It, they're, it's on social media, they're aware of climate change. They list climate change as being one of their um, biggest concerns for the future. Um, and they're really holding brands accountable for taking responsibility to, to take action. So we have our customers, and then our associates also. I, I think that these days, you know, we want to work for a company that is reflecting our values, and that we see um, the ability to take action within the company and to be part of something. And sustainability, you know, I oversee a department for sustainability, but really it has to be, you know, the entire company is getting engaged in it. Um, so we have, you know, we have those factors, and then also, you know, externally, investors are asking about it. There's regulation about it. There's media about it. Um, so we really have to be taking proactive um, action right. so that we're doing, um, we're managing our programs in a way that's appropriate for AEO um, with, with all of these stakeholders um, now asking questions. Um, so yes, it's absolutely, it's, it's definitely become a, a huge initiative. Love that. And you're right, like the, even my daughter who's six is very aware of, you know, where we're putting plastics and where we're putting. The sea turtles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter brings up the sea turtles all the time. <laughs> She's so aware. Um, I love that. What are your sustainability goals right now for AEO? So we have been working on sustainability for a number of years. And in 2018, um, we, we felt that we really needed to be clear on what our initiatives are going to be around sustainability and to start you know, directing action within the company. Um, and then also to be able to clearly communicate externally what it is that we're focused on and we're working on. So we looked to see where our biggest impacts were. Um, and from that, developed goals um, to really focus on water and genes. So we're looking at how to reduce water in, in all of our genes production. 
Um, the second, on climate change. So we've committed to being carbon neutral in our own operations by 2030. And then reducing the energy um, used in our manufacturing, 40% um, by 2030 and 60% by 2040. Um, additionally, we've made commitments around raw materials, looking at cotton and polyester in particular. Um, and then also, finally, at waste. So how do we um, reduce apparel waste? We've put some programs in to be able to recycle garments. You can bring your jeans into the American Eagle. You can bring bras into Airy. Um, and then also, where, do we, where can we reduce plastic waste, which I know is a, is a huge concern for, for everyone. Absolutely. When people bring their jeans into the company, are those recycled? And like, how are you using um, the jeans that people are bringing in? So it is, they're being recycled now primarily into insulation okay. um, and some other products that can come from that. Okay. Um, would love to move to a place where we are, you know, how do we recycle back into uh, manufacturing? And we do have initiatives for that um, at the factory level. So with our, we're, our factories are working already at how to incorporate those fibers back into, into new products. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I have some ideas. Okay. I'm going to share with you guys later <laughs> what we can do with these jeans for the HBCUs. Excellent. I have an idea. Um, can you tell us about some of the changes that AEO has made in production? And actually, you just told us that, so that answer. What further changes would you all like to see in fashion just for a more sustainable industry? Because we're talking about it a lot, but there's still so much work to be done. Mm -hmm. And that's for anyone. Yeah. Do you want to do it before we production? Well, obviously, I think it starts from at every level. So in terms of in the production where I oversee Aries, um, three brands, Aries, offline and unsubscribe in their production, product development, manufacturing, and global sourcing. So um, we definitely want to expand our real good offering. So meaning all our product would have a sustainability um, aspect to it and we want to continue to expand that offering to our, um, to our customer. And then at the same time, you know, we're really aligning and, and supporting the initiative is team up with partners that are really sharing the same um, sustainable value um, in their manufacturing process um, in terms of, you know, focus on their water and energy savings, you know, have them um, um, have, have their they do have water waste management and then using renewable um, energy to power the factory uh, or in-store efficient um, energy um, all through the, the layout. And maybe we are also want to, we're also starting to look at reduction or elimination of chemical mm -hmm. in some of the process like dyeing and coating. Mm -hmm. So adopting like solution dye as dope dye or natural dye. Um, we also, you know, partner with um, the partners also looking into really invest into their uh, disposal and treatment of waste material management and then invest in, really invest in replacement of machinery, old, old generation machinery that is into more um, energy efficient. Um, design. So I think at AEO, um, the one thing that I feel like we are doing, we're not just at that level. We are ev this is a collaborative effort at every level. So we also continue to challenge our team. What are the sustainability um, uh, opportunities in their daily routine, in their process? So people can, you know, just for example, in our design and development process, how do we want to minimize waste. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that the team is looking at is incorporate 3D technology. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the team start to find out when we challenge them to do it more sustainable. Sustainable, um, they find out sustainability actually tie, uh, goes hand in hand with efficiency. Mm -hmm. So having them, you know, look at the sustainability piece of it, it actually in the 3D um, technology, it reduced their workload. Mm -hmm. It also in improve the sample execution. Mm -hmm. And then last year, my team also, what they did in the color department, um, we implementing a elimination of plastic use in one of our process. Um, all our suppliers has a habit 
when they send us um, content and packages, they wrap in plastic bag. Yep. Sometimes they wrap in layers of plastic yes. bags. Yes. <laughs> so, so, so we said, you know, we don't want anymore. So, you know, those might not be a huge corporate initiative, those little things that counts. So we impl implemented that policy. But obviously, um, all habits die hard. Yeah. Not everybody <laughs> can combine right away. So what we did and, you know, our team team up with Michelle, we also um, started penalize people that's non-compliance. Mm. All the proceeds from penalty goes right back to Michelle <laughs> and her team invest in the sustainability effort mm. for the corporate world. So I love that. So basically you're telling your suppliers, you can ship to us, don't ship in plastics. If you keep shipping in plastics, you're gonna get penalized and you're taking the money from them being penalized and I, that yeah. back into it's sustainability. Most effective That's incredible. when you want people to do what you want them to do, hit their pocket. Right yes. away, they'll do it. <laughs> we don't but take advantage. But that's brilliant, <laughs> right? That you're taking the money from the penalty and that it's going back into the sustainability um, budget, right? For you, that's incredible. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, we, we the, the everyone has the opportunity to make an impact. Just by changing behavior and habits, just like, you know, paper, go paperless, unplug the, the electronic, recycle. And, you know, this is what we are doing at AEO. And simply put, at AEO, we live in what we believe in. Well, I think it's amazing even that we're on a panel together. You know, a few years ago, <laughs> a few years ago, you know, it would be sustainability. The, the sustainability person talks about sustainability. Production talks about production. and. You know, it was seen as being much more siloed work, mm. whereas the, you know, we really understood that the only way to meet our goals um, is with the dedication of the production teams, the design teams, the merchant teams, you know, everybody really getting involved I in the program. Right. Um, and that's where we've seen the impacts is, you know, our factories have made amazing changes, but our designers and our production teams that have been there working together with the factories um, to get these new technologies um, up to a place that's meeting our expectations and aesthetic. I love that. Because you, if you're over here in the corner talking sustainability and everybody else right. doing something totally different, right. it negates everything, all the effort yeah. that your, your, your department is putting forth. And one thing Michelle talked about our associates, as we call our employees, and sort of their passion, and Fiona talking about everybody can do their own little thing, is that we call our ERGs, our employee resource groups, networks and connections. So, you know, one of those networks is our green team. And so that is, you know, associates from the business who are just passionate about sustainability. And it's amazing what people can do when they come together. And I say, like, all change is one step at a time, right? Like, whether you talked about every journey <laughs> starts with one step. And so it's really awesome when you get people involved and in doing their part. Right. Um, and they do stuff they're like, hey, if we hit this goal, we get a day off or, <laughs> or an early out on a Friday, right? You know, that type of thing, you know, and people are like, oh, okay, great, yeah, like. Great incentive. And, right, but at the same time, you're getting some great, you know, some great action as a part of that. That's incredible. Um, now, Terry, I know you have some exciting news about an internship opportunity. <laughs> Yeah, so, so here's the thing. So, Felita on your team, we were having a call. It was myself and Michelle. And we're talking, and I do like to talk, and I get excited, you know. And, you know, I was calling Brand, this is a real one, and I was just going <laughs> off on HFR. Um, but then we were talking about, you know, talk about, you know, the fashion industry and the fact that sustainability is the future mm -hmm. of fashion. Absolutely. Whether, I mean, it is. I mean, that's, I think that's a fact. And, you know, just like many things, people of color and maybe specifically black people are always not sort of reaping those benefits or they do so so far down the line um, that they're not able to achieve the same results. And so I say part of it is making sure we get sort of a greater representation, even just within the sustainability field, because I do think there's a distinction between just fashion you know, in retail, but then those people, you know, even like a Michelle, who's like a real expert in the sort of technical aspects of sustainability. So after this call, 
you know, me and Michelle were talking, and, you know, Michelle's really smart, and she's like, Terry, she's like, Terry, like, here's the thing, you know, you can have, you know, degrees, you can have fancy letters behind your name, but what we really need are people that have real life experience. Because, you know, not speaking for you, Michelle, but you go into rooms, probably these conferences, and it's a pretty homogeneous <laughs> looking population. And I think it's important to sort of diversify that at, I'm not saying it's the earliest stage, right. but I do think in the life cycle of sustainability, we're probably still <laughs> toddlers, um, hopefully. Um, and so, you know, we just thought just a little thing we could do. It's not big. I know. You know Look at I don't here. Wanna, we are not going to be downplayed. I don't, don't want to parade. No, 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 no. I don't want to parade. <laughs> I mean, we ain't getting a parade. But we said, what's the little thing we can do? We can try to maybe help to diversify like sustainability offices like within companies, including our own. So right. I said, what better opportunity maybe do an internship um, for this summer um, you know, that we can then continue on? Um, maybe working with Michelle, which is yeah. So, um, and so that's what we're going to do, you know, and we want to we want to reach out to the HBCUs um, just because, you know, you all do a great job with HBCUs. My parents went to an HBCU, Virginia State University. Um, and so I think that's a great opportunity and hopefully that little part. And if we get more people doing that type of thing, all of a sudden you start going to these conferences, you start going to these events. And then you see, uh, I think, a more representative cross-section of our society at these tables. Yeah. I think that's going to make a difference, right? And so, you know. So, I think I'll hey, give okay. that a hand clap, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you get to work with Michelle. You probably can see on that. I will jump in every now and then um, to say hi. But We have awesome. a fun group of people. <laughs> very passionate, but very fun and lovable people. I love that. So if you all, too, know an HBCU student that's looking for an opportunity in sustainability, how do they apply for the opportunity, or where do they go? Yeah, so literally, I had this call with, well, I had this call with <laughs> Felita. Yeah, I'm a real one, too. I had this call with Felita probably a week and a half ago, and, you know, we got everything approved, and so what I'm going to do is, we'll, I'll figure out a way, we'll put it out probably on AEO Inc. or our, our site, to try to you know work with some people, okay. But we'll we'll try to make the opportunity. Like I said, it's gonna be one position right now, so you know that, I mean that's a limitation. But we're but hopefully this can be something that we can build on in the future. Um, like I said, every journey one step. Um, but you know if we can do anything, if we have this opportunity to provide information, an opportunity, um, and that's one thing. You know, I'm so thankful for you, Brandis, is that. Y'all believe in access, which is, you know, I think critical. You know, like I said, we go by this idea of IDEA, inclusion, diversity, equity, and access at AEO. And that access is an important thing because, you know, I'm looking out into the room here. I know others are on the streaming. I mean, you're having an opportunity to hear from people, to learn, and that's access that a lot of people in the past haven't had. And so when you have an organization like HFR who's doing that, don't ever take it for granted. And that's why I'm rolling with you big time, Brandis and everybody else. Thank you so much, Terry. Thank you. And we're so grateful. American Eagle, AEO, sorry, is, um, <laughs> is one of our partners for this event. And so they've really helped to make this happen. So thank you so much for your partnership. Thank you for this conversation. Thank you for having and us. And for the students who want to know more about that internship opportunity right away. Reach out to me. I was going to give them our email. And we or do that. Do, do, both. that. do both. I can give you guys a view email office at harlemsfashionroad.com. We'll look there, and they will send until the page is set up, and then we'll send those resumes over to you. Does yeah, that yeah, work? Yeah, yeah. That's we'll great. Work it out. All right, perfect. Thank you. Join me in giving them a huge Thank hand you. of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. Um, we're so grateful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Oh. always.